So one of the best things about working on Prison Architect, I felt, and I think you did as well, were was making the YouTube videos yes. that we made, we made every month. And since we moved away from Prison Architect, we have made a few YouTube videos. We have. And, and often it's quite heartening to read in the comments that a couple of people out there enjoy listening to you and me talking about things. Yeah, they just love the sound of your voice. They're, my silky, my silky radio tones. You should read children's stories. I don't think I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been grappling with thinking about what could we make videos about? You know, it would be nice if we uh, could make videos about a new game, but uh, that's not been forthcoming. So you start thinking about what, what could we make videos about? We could make them about, I don't know, news in the games industry or or, mm -hmm. or this and that but ideally it should be something introversion related and something that goes on for quite a long time and something that we're that we're very good at and then um we sort of had a discussion and, and realized that your ability to fail hits all of those <laughs> <laughs> all of those characteristics my ability you... to fail that's yeah. what you're going to hinge this whole thing on yeah yeah <laughs> okay do you remember? This in, is the in, new in, venture. In university, right? Oh, I used yes. to call you abandon delay. I do remember that, yes. And now and that's, why, and why did you do tell me? Why did you call me abandon delay? Because all, it felt like every day, not every day, every month, you'd come to me and tell me about a new, a new game idea that you'd come up with. Mm. And, um, you know, and then, and then you'd failed. Yeah. You'd, you'd failed. I didn't so, fail. I, I strategically stopped allocating resources to... <laughs> To that project, <laughs> a strategic cessation. That's of right. That's right. Of resources. It was it was a willful, and um, it was a it was a it was a, a, a careful separation. A careful separation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, what, what to focus on? So yeah, I, I used to I used to I used to start a game and abandon it quite regularly, actually, mm. at, at university and before university as well. I went through a lot of projects. And it was only when we finally started, I say we, it was me doing all the work at the time. It was only okay. when I finally started work on Uplink yes, yes. that we actually realized we had a keeper. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and maybe more people might be surprised that Uplink was like my fifth major game or something. If I hadn't promised to, give, to, to sell Uplink to people, you would have abandoned that. Do you think so? No, I'm just saying that to try and, you know, <laughs> justify, justify my, my role in, in all see. of this. I see, I see. We have been working really hard at failing to produce we have. prototype we've games. Been, <laughs> we've been excelling at failing <laughs> to produce a viable video game. And we're now going to bring you those prototypes. Not you, you're Chris. I was addressing the audience then. That didn't really work, did it? Okay. See, we're out. We're out of practice at this, mate. Yeah. Uh, listen, we're going to. I don't know. This sounds. This sounds roughly as polished as <laughs> the average PA video. Look, trust us. These videos are going to get better. <laughs> They're going to get better. But wait, what, so, why don't you talk? What's the idea here? What's the idea? Well, would you like to? Would you like to tell us what what you would like to call this process? Well, this is Chris Delay's fail masterclass. <laughs> Since um, Prison Architect, we obviously worked on Scanner Samba um, and released that. But at the same time as Scanner Samba, we also made another game that was called Wrongwire. You remember Wrongwire? I enjoyed Wrongwire, yeah. Bomb Diffusal Prototype. That was a VR, um, VR wasn't it? Yeah, Early it, was, VR. it was also a VR game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then since then, we moved on to a whole bunch of other projects. Um, we started out looking at a space building exploration game that was kind of the concept for what introversion's seventh game was going to be and we showed that off at rest so we actually got pretty far with that one um but as you have alluded to we abandoned that project we strategically withdrew all resources from that project and moved on to something else and we started a new game idea and over the past three years this cycle has repeated over and over again, and we have actually made 
quite a number of video game projects, prototypes, um, every one of which is really interesting and really unusual, but is ultimately a failure because it doesn't lead to a game that we feel we could take forward and actually finish. So they're all prototypes. They're all kind of failed prototypes, if you like. It's been a little bit frustrating. It's that oh, That's the honest truth. that we, yeah. we obviously didn't want it to be this way. We obviously would much rather have launched into game number seven and uh, taken it all the way to the end. But I think, I think we learned a hard lesson with Subversion, didn't we, a while ago. We learned the hard lesson that when you... When you know in your heart of heart that this game is not going to work and that you're just facing an uphill struggle to even get it finished, you have to move on. You have to stop working and move on to something else. Because if you don't, you'll end up where we were with Subversion, where we kind of put three years into one game, um, desperately trying to get it to work. And it, it doesn't, you can't force it, you know? Your game, if your game doesn't work, your game doesn't work. And it doesn't matter how much effort you put into making it work. But it's been a strange time. You know, this is this is over a three-year period now, and during that three-year period, um, I feel like we've been round this <laughs> this merry-go-round several times over. Mm. Mm. Um, and I think it's important to mention for posterity that you know we're slap bang in the middle of COVID at the moment. Mm. Uh, we're in the UK. This is our second lockdown, so it's an odd time in in the world globally that's you know has had an effect of course yeah. it's had an effect it's had an effect on on everybody and i think in part it's had an, a, an effect on our ability to um to get something sort of over the line definitely i mean it's a, but, it's, a it's a creative process isn't it yes you know, we don't um we've never done we're never big on sequels we don't we don't sort of just think oh let's just make another defcon or something yeah we've always well, been I we've <laughs> i know you do <laughs> <laughs> You'd love it, wouldn't you, if I came I to you one it, day yeah. and said, mate, I'm going to do Uplink 2. Yeah. I've decided. But yeah. no, no, I don't work no, that way. Do it. I, need to, I need to find really unusual, odd nuggets of ideas and turn them into full-blown weird games, like Scanner Somber. You know, that's, that's yeah. where I live. Yeah, and so yeah. And um, Prison Architect and Defcon and Uplink yeah, and Dark right. and Ultimate, right. you know, and the ones that the ones that have come to pass. That's but right. I think that the, the 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 real positives here are that the prototypes have got really good ideas and concepts, and we want people to be able to 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 look at them and play them. Maybe it will kick off some uh, other ideas in in other um, other game devs. I think that's who I think the audience is is, is here really. Um, people that love making games, we're sort of opening a window into introversions, development hell. Yeah. And hopefully, I'd, I'd like a bit of dialogue as well. You know, hopefully we'll get some people talking in the comments about what, where they thought we could have perhaps taken this game. You know, have we got blind spots? What have we missed? Um, so I, I think... Yeah, we got a lot of that with Subversion. A lot of people still tell us yeah. about Subversion and what they think we could have done with it and how we think we could have improved it. Um, yeah, and I think that's probably true of quite a lot of these prototypes. Yeah, they, I hope so. With, with a different hat on, probably every one of them could have been a big game in its own right. Yeah. But for whatever reason, we didn't feel like we wanted to take it forwards, you know. But it is it's, that's part of the creative process, you know. So our plan then, we are going to make a video roughly once a month. But don't hold us to that. Don't pin us down. We're not the kind of guys that make promises. We're like, you know wind guys no that's not right <laughs> <laughs> i meant oh anyway well, like a, well like reeds reeds flowing yeah, you flowing forwards and backwards in the at the bottom of the ocean is that yeah. what you say <laughs> yeah yeah something like that we can't be we, forced into a certain shape no we, we don't we're not going to hit hit your deadlines yeah. we'll hit our own deadlines but roughly once a month we're going to have a look at one of the prototypes that we've um, we've decided not to pursue. So we're going to make a video. We're going to talk about it. Um, we hope you're going to enjoy that. But there's more than that. We're actually going to uh, let you play the prototypes, all of them in one. We are. We are. We are. <laughs> you didn't one... tell me this. I. Did... <laughs> yeah, we are. We are. And we're going to do it in Shit, one. Get to work. <laughs> pay what you want bundle. So uh, once you've bought into the bundle, you'll get access to all of the prototypes as they as they as they come in. Um, and it's been a tough year 
for everybody you know we, we know this both in work and and economically and the third sector charity sector has been hit particularly hard and um we would like to do our bit to um try and support a cause which is close to our hearts which is war child a charity that looks to support children who are affected by by war so all of the um, the profit that we make from uh, the donations, really, around the the bundle of prototypes, we're going to give straight to uh, to War Child. So obviously, there's like small transaction fees that uh, get taken away, but anything that we end up with, we're, we're going to give straight to them, uh, which we think is um, is a worthwhile worthwhile cause. So hopefully, you'll be interested in in playing the prototypes that we talk about. And if you are and you choose to, or in your position to, to give a small donation, then um, that'll be going to a good cause. So that is the plan. That is the plan. Fantastic. I think it's a good plan. I love it. It's an exciting plan. I've got to be honest, yeah. mate. I'm really looking forward to getting back to making monthly videos. Yeah, I am. There, there was something about it during during Prison Architect in particular. There was something about the monthly cycle of, of um, getting something ready for release and then making a video um, and then us setting up all of our recording gear and then me editing it. And then getting that sort of feedback from YouTube as well. You yeah. know, it was just a brilliant process. I got quite addicted to it and I've missed it a lot in the last yeah. three years when it I feels have. like we've just kind of been quiet and we haven't really been able to show anything publicly. Yeah, yeah. It's not felt good, has it? So mm. let's dive in. Order of Magnitude. Order of Magnitude, yes. I remember Order of Magnitude. I liked Order of Magnitude. Yes, I did too. I liked all of our prototypes. So this I think, is, it, yeah, go on. I was going to say this is the this is actually the first major project that we took on after Scanner Samba, isn't it? Yeah, is it? I can't remember. There it, have been so is. many. Yes, when we there were when been... we were showing Scanner Samba at Rest, <clears throat> um, I had the design for Order of Magnitude in my head. You know, the idea for a, like a space space building colony game. Yeah. Um, I think I described it at one point as Kerbal space uh factorio architect right yeah yeah right <laughs> and quite a lot of the problems with the game can probably be found right away just in that summary yeah. <laughs> so the, the 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 idea for this um or the theme <clears throat> from this came from bsg didn't it about star galactic if you've not watched that yeah. uh the the remake um around the turn of the century you should because it's some of the best sci-fi that um i've seen certainly the early early seasons and it was um you know it covered everything didn't it that's that's what i liked about this because yeah. the, the idea that humanity's on the back foot you know you, you've got to build a society of 100 people um with all of the uh the, the sociological impact of that yeah that's you know right. that was that was what interested me Classic you know when apocalyptic scenario basically the majority of humans have been destroyed in this case in an yeah. asteroid collision um and it's just down to you to deal with the survivors and the yeah but well, well, battlestar galactica was fascinating because it it dealt with the sort of human and sociological impact of being on the run and, and only being sort of 30 or forty thousand survivors of all yeah. of humanity that was what was interesting about it and that and that that move from surviving to thriving you know mm. from you know what kind of a society are we trying to build what are we trying to preserve i remember when they had elections you start thinking what you know this is a military environment they, they can't have elections you know yeah. but, the, the, but you know it's kind of like what's the point in um in existing if you don't have a say if things and i kind of think that that is how it would be you know there would be a return to kind of some form of, of civic government and things and it's that's interesting to me because if you can look at things on a small level, then I think sometimes you can apply those principles to, um, to, to kind of larger government and things. Yeah, that's but, right. Um, yeah. So what do you have to do? Well, so yeah, so this is, this is as far as we got with the order of magnitude prototype. We obviously had the idea that you were just mentioning that, that there'd been, this is earth, right? This ball here, this is the wreckage of earth. And you can right. see there's like a sort of wrecked asteroid belt around it. Like it's been hit by some massive extinction level, um, asteroids smash. And the aim of the game is essentially to rebuild humanity in space. I didn't think that was even our subtitle at one point. Right. Um, so, um, and you start with the moon. And so the, the, what we focused on in this particular prototype was building a functioning lunar colony and getting the survivors of this disaster over to that. Um, so should we go to the moon? Let's have a look. Let's around. go to the moon. Do 
Do you know how to play this game? Yeah, it's been a while since I've played it, actually. <laughs> it's been quite a while. I was just trying... The moon was hiding behind the asteroid belt. Right, there we okay. go. All right, so, it's, so I, it tells me that... Uh, I'm just following the tutorial now. So it tells me that I can click on the Lunar 1 button and fly to the moon. Here we go. That's uh, nice. So you can start to see, like, straight away, we actually have a fully functioning solar system model here. Like, you can actually see Saturn in the background there in the distance. Yeah. Um, and we're actually... So this is... Here we are. At, we're actually on the south pole of the moon here, um, so we're on the we're on the. If you can imagine, we're on the underside of the moon. You know? Right. Although it feels like we're on a planet's surface. Earth, Earth is. If you actually could see Earth from here, it's actually upside down. Right. Right. Um, um, it's weird, isn't it? You've got no, and it's you know oh, that orientation is, is strange. But... Yeah, it's hard to get your head around. Well, I can make yeah. it easier by showing you like the whole the whole planet. But the the moon, if you like, traditionally would actually be more like this way. Maybe that makes it more more sensible. We spent a long time with this. I remember messing around with the scale and trying to figure out what we could get away with, you know? Because the reality, of course, is that the moon and the earth are not this close and the sun doesn't look this big in the sky. Yeah. But I had like a really clear idea in my head that I wanted it to have this really stylized look. But, right. the, but all the planets in the solar system would still be there and would still be following their correct astronomical orbits. Right. Um, I don't really know why I wanted that. I think it was just part of what I thought would make it make it interesting. You know? Well, I think that's part of what, what we've done at Introversion, where, where we, we've sort of taken close to real world scenarios and, and bent it in service of the game. Yeah. You know, I think that's part of our, of our not, not in everything that we've made, but, um, you know, Uplink and DEF CON, I, I think, oh, and Prison Architect, obviously, have, have been simulations of real world events, but yeah. slightly. Yeah, that's right. I think we're, we're always big on simulation, aren't we? We're always generally looking to find things that we can simulate because I think that the the dream for this game is that ultimately you would colonize the entire solar system, and that there would be there would be space stations, and there would be a Mars colony, and there would be colonies on the moons of Jupiter and Saturn, you know, and there would be spaceships flying around. Obviously, we never reached any of those points because we just thought we'd start with the moon. Yeah. Um, but that was kind of the vision behind the game. Quite a big vision, really, wasn't it? Yeah. A, possibly a little, just just a touch over ambitious, I think. <laughs> I don't Maybe. know. Just what do you bit. think about? Well, I don't know. You know, I mean, we we kind of set out with the aspiration. We've still got this aspiration to find an idea that we can work on for six or seven years, mm -hmm. kick yeah. out an alpha every month, and and just keep layering in the complexity. You know, that's that's what a successful game looks like to us. So yeah. having that large ambition. It's not as crazy as it would have sounded 10 years ago when you had to get there and then release it. You know, the, um, the alpha model kind of rewards that, you know, games with that scope. And if they don't have that scope, I don't think they're viable. Yeah, that's right. I think that's what we were thinking. I think we'd, we'd imagine that we would start with Lunar Colony um, and there would be some colony building and there would be some Factorio style industry um, and there would be some prison architect -y style colony management. Um, and then... Once the alpha was underway, we would expand and you know make it more possible to go to other places. Uh, so I'm just following the tutorial. So this is this is like our starting colony, you know. So we've got we've got the first lander ships with some some little people on board, some dudes, um, little guys just hanging around waiting for a lunar yeah. colony. This this always reminds me the like the the craziness of video games generally. Like you know in Prison Architects where you you know there's going to prisoners are arriving in 24 hours and there's nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's just a field. <laughs> Yeah, this is yeah. kind of the same, you know. These same guys, thing, these guys yeah. have landed on the moon, and there's nothing here. You know, so, it's our job to make that make that change. Um, so, we need we have a this this rocket in the middle, this sort of SpaceX vertical landing rocket thing, has got all of our resources on board. So this is like right. a ship that's managed to escape Earth before the destruction, and has brought with it a ton of like metals and aluminium and glass and and little robots as well. These are little robot helpers. Yeah, cool. And it's, these are kind of like our workmen, you know. So I've asked them to build a couple of stockpiles, and then our robots army will unload all of the resources that are in our rocket into these little stockpiles where we can start making use of them. I know you can't hear sound. I know you can never hear sound when we do these sorts of things, but the sound is really, really cool. It's Alistair right. Lindsay once again, and the music as well. Um, and all these little robots have got their own little squawks and they're like these right, little right. rattly little machines and they beep at you. If you fly your camera near to a robot, they sort of beep at you to get out of the way. <laughs> right, right, that's cool. You know? It's like a really neat touch. Um, so 
we want somewhere for our people to live, right? This is a colony game. This is like an emergency colony, right? This isn't going to be luxury. This is going to be like survival, you know? Um, yeah. So let's build the basic colony hub. We can spin it around and I'm going to place it like this, I think. Um, and we want somewhere for our... So this is like the center of our new colony. It's not built yet, obviously. It's just a blueprint. Um, and we want a dormitory for people to sleep in. All right, now, so you can see, I'm actually following this. This is quite, this is actually the tutorial that we included in the, in the REST build. Right. Do you remember when we showed it off at REST? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's, it's a, it's quite over prescriptive at the start. Like it, it's really holding your hand very carefully. Yeah. Um, which is no bad thing for a new game, I suppose. Um, but it's sort of like playing the start of Prison Architect, you know, it's quite, quite a narrow, it's a narrow set of things that you can do to start with. Um, so I'm just following what it says. So this was a this is a concrete silo, again not built yet because we don't have the materials. The idea behind a concrete silo is that you can scoop up like the lunar regolith off the surface yeah. of the moon, and then kind of mash it up in a process um, and turn it into a useful uh, material that you can then build your other basic buildings out of. Right? Because these aren't going to be built out of aren't going to be built out of fancy glass and metal. No, you're not, be, gonna, you're not going to be lifting all that off of Earth, are you? Exactly. You're going to have to they're work gonna, with what you've got up there. They're going to be built out of shitty layers of um, mm. like layered up lunar regolith mashed up mm. into like a concrete, you know. Um, so there's our is regolith just you know soil on the yeah. moon? Yeah, regolith is just the word for like whatever the it's, yeah surface whatever soil is. the sort of surface covering is, isn't yeah. it? That's right. In fact, we can actually look if we look in the minerals mode. These are the minerals that we know are in the area. Um, right, and so we can actually view this view this area. So this area is there's lunar regolith there virtually everywhere, but there are other minerals here as well in in certain configurations. Right. Um, so and this kind of affects where you do your mining. So do, the, so you might you might didn't mention earlier, for example, why are we actually at the south pole of the moon? Now the reason why is that there's actually ice in the at the south pole of the moon. Or at least right. largely, pretty much certain there's ice on the moon, um, but it's in these deep craters. So remember, we're on the absolute bottom of the moon, right, from Earth's point of view, we're at the South Pole. So if you go right down into this crater, we will never actually see the sun. Right, okay. The sun just rotates around us all day long and never never crests over the top of the cliff. Right, right. So there are right. some really deep craters at the South Pole of the moon. And inside those craters, there's a lot of frozen ice that's never been melted. Right, Whereas okay. Whereas the surface of the moon, anywhere that's exposed surface... There's never going to be any ice because it's always going to just melt. It gets away. hot, melts, and evaporates. Exactly. Um, so these are the these are the minerals that we have access to within a, within our area. The most important of which, obviously, being ice. Um, yeah. So need to drink. That's right. Well, you need water it's, for everything. You need water. Well, you do. You can't make beer without water. You, you, and you can't, can't live without beer. Can you, you can't so, grow the barley that you need to make no. the beer without water. Um, That's right. Uh, I mean, you, this is their minimum society. You know. Yeah, that's right. Um, and you need, uh, it's even more than that. You need, um, uh, water's actually very effective rocket fuel. Not a lot of people know that. <laughs> Maybe they do. <laughs> so you can separate water into hydrogen and oxygen. Um, yeah. And this is me starting to dip slightly into some of the problems with this game now. That It's a little over nerdy on the science in places. Um, I went quite deep on the science of how you could plausibly build a lunar colony. And I got really excited by the idea that you could basically make everything out of water. Um, because once you've, once you've electrolyzed water into hydrogen and oxygen, you can burn the hydrogen in the oxygen to make, and that's effectively, a, that's a very effective rocket fuel. Right. Um, and you can also breathe the oxygen if you want to use it that way. Um, and the hydrogen that you separate from electrolyzing water, you can use that in a bunch of other reactions as well. Um, that produce all the things that you need to build a sustainable colony. Um, and I seem to remember you and me having a lot of discussions about how nerdy we were going to go. Like, how much do people really care about the science, you know? And how much do people just want to play the game? I think that in these games, that that getting that granularity right is actually crucial. You know, it's crucial because some people adore it. You know, they, they love going all the way down to a physically accurate moon model mm. uh you know where the minerals are where we know they are or or you know we're following scientific predictions um but just with you know small changes to to make it not grindy you know that's that's the other yeah, thing yeah yeah whereas other people 
have got no interest and, and achieving that balance is really important. I watched um, Interstellar again the other day. Yes. Uh, I find that to be one of the saddest movies I, I've ever watched. You know, <laughs> it really is. Isn't I, it? I find it so sad. It's you know, heartbreaking it's, if you're a parent. I think that. Yeah, I watch. think I think exactly that. You know, especially because I've got a daughter, and um, you know, you just that moment when you realise he's missed her entire childhood and, yes. it, and it's gone. It's just, it's just, you know, awful. But the, you know, they did. Uh, I can't remember who it was. They they had a scientific advisor on it, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, who was it? Um, yeah, no, so it'll, it'll come to me. Who wrote the, 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 yeah, the they, they, it's a very sciencey movie, but they managed yeah. to dress the science up in material that's, that makes it interesting. That's right. That's right. And yeah, they 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 use it when it matters, and and they fail to. I mean, there's no way they could have existed in that black hole, right? But it's kind of like if they could exist in the black hole, then time, you know, in that manner mm. is is kind of it's plausible, you know. And that's such a good um, visualization of of that. I thought. Yeah. you know making time a spatial dimension i think that's really really clever mm. yeah i agree I'm, I'm a huge christopher nolan fan i think we've mentioned christopher nolan more than once in a mark and chris previous video yeah um, i think that he he manages to find the human element that um perhaps skipping forward slightly in our conversation here is missing from this prototype yeah know? that um it's big on the nerdy science and i kind of wanted it to be quite factorio style so this, I mean, whilst we were talking, I built this mining zone that's currently right. scraping away at the surface. And we have all of our robots are now running around, moving the uh, lunar regolith to the concrete silo, which is then making concrete. And then that concrete was then used to build those buildings. So you can see we've got the beginning of a production line. Yeah. Um, but you can actually see as well some of the abandoned parts of the project. This little green port thing here. Do you remember there was an earlier version of the game where you had to build all the conveyor belts? Yeah, yeah, there exactly. There were no that. robots, so there was a conveyor yeah. belt coming out here, and then there were splitters and everything. And then all that material was then routed into, there's another port there in the concrete silo, you know? Yeah. So I would have spent the next half hour connecting it all up with pipes. Yeah. Um, you know, and then those pipes would have fed into what's the colony hub. So you see the colony hub is currently keeping stockpiles of, what is this, this is like our water that we brought with us and our food and things and our oxygen. Because that was a direct reference to um, Factorio, wasn't it? Yes. And the, the pipeline element of Factorio, I think you wanted to try and replicate. I think that was the main part I wanted to replicate. Even, yeah. Even the, and that was the mistake. That was one of the biggest mistakes that I made, I think. That this is, this is a colony game that we're setting up here. And it became obvious to me that the only thing that was ever going to make it viable and interesting was making the people that live here interesting. Um, but this this prototype as it sits is very focused on the nitty gritty of logistics and energy and resources and chemical processes and things. Mm. Um, so the, it's telling me to build our first algae farms. So I've tried to think about like what's the bare minimum method that you could use to make food on the moon? Because you can't grow anything in the lunar soil, you're constantly being irradiated by the sun anyway. Yeah. Um, you're a long way off being able to grow crops. You can bring food with you, but it's only going to last a certain amount of time. Um, and I read around and I found that there was, it was possible that you could just grow giant vats of, of high protein algae. Yeah. Pretty disgusting. Yeah, just um, eating the sludge, right? Like um, uh, Snowpiercer, right? Have you yeah, seen the film? That, um, yeah, that's right. Exactly yeah. that. It's it's like a viable source of protein and, and nutrition that human beings can live off. Yeah. Um, but it would just be horrendous. But you've got to start somewhere, you know? Yeah, ultimately, yeah. Ultimately, food is like a, a pyramid, isn't it? And if yeah. you're going to, if you ultimately want to be, I mean, it's going to be, you're a long way off having like cows walking around that you can turn into beef. And there are, yeah, there <laughs> but, are. But well, they have to eat crops rosy. and those crops have to grow off have to have yeah, some sort of nutrients yeah. you know you'd have to you'd be looking at those synthetic you know sort of organic beefs and things but there there are people in the world you must have met them who, who don't really care about food you know and, and you say to them there's not many of them because you know that's just weird but you know there are people that go i just i don't really I, you know i don't get a hit off of it like other people do mm. whereas i think for yeah, you mean they're not bothered by nice food they just see food as like yeah getting rid of their yeah. hunger yeah, exactly that. Like, a, like a, a, an inconvenience in their day that they've got to to eat. Yeah, you know, and those are the kind of people that you you want you know, <laughs> They'd because be fine with algae how, biscuits. I don't know how long I'd last on algae biscuits. <laughs> Although, if I had some algae beer, I might be all right. 
I don't think you could have beer. No, because you need quite a lot for beer. You need a huge amount of liquid as well. It'd be, it'd be such a waste of water, you know. I mean, we can actually see in our uh, storage. Uh, so we've we've got uh, 289 water that's going down at a rate of two a day. So we've got right. 100 days until we run out of water. Um, it's the same for everything. I mean, we're not we're not a self sufficient colony yet, you know, because we're not really generating anything. Um, so the, this algae farm is now using up a bit of power, and it'll be using up water, um, but it will be producing food. So we're just starting to get production of food underway. Right. Um, and have you got colonists up here yet? Yeah, so if you go inside like this dormitory, for example, you can see there are people hanging out in here, right? So there, okay. are, there are 297 people here. Because that looks nice as well, doesn't it? That looks like a nice environment that I'd like to, yeah. <laughs> so I'd like to live in. This is realistically where you're going to be in an yeah. in a, in a emergency-built lunar colony. Yeah, yeah. They don't really do anything. You know, I mean, part of the problem is, in the comparison to prison architects, obviously, every human being in prison architect is mapping their own course and having their own day, and they've got their own uh, complex psychological model. Yeah. Um, but it took us years to develop that. But we could have done that in this. That that's not a reason that this failed. You know, we we could have layered in classes of people. You know, yeah. scientists, uh, had, administrators. I think that we did plan to do that. You know, mm. I mean, there's actually there's actually colony stats. This is our age breakdown and our gender breakdown. Like, so Battlestar Galactica deals with exactly this issue. Like, is birth control a human right in the era when there are only 300 people left of all humanity, you know, yeah. or a few yeah. thousand? And it's a really fascinating moral question, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, Handmaid's Tale deals with it as well, isn't it? It's a sort of central theme in, yeah. in that as well. It's like the, it's like the prime scenario where um, a sort of dictatorship is likely to take over through military force yeah. and then start issuing you know, very strong instructions. And That's obviously right. things like food and water would be strictly rationed and you know, there isn't there isn't really any concept of free time. Um, but part of the problem, I mean, some of the problems here is that everything is still being done by robots. You know, our colonists don't have anything to do because there is no viable job for a colony to, colonist to do out here mm. um, in this lunar colony. Everything's being built by automated production by robots. Um, which I think is plausible. I think realistically, this would have all been built before humans even arrived. Yeah. Um, so you, it's it's difficult to engage with it on an emotional level because you we are still essentially building a factory, um, a factorial style factory. It does feel like we were we we were close though. You know, I mean, these things that you talk about, they they don't feel insurmountable to me. You know, like you hobble the robots. That's you know, that that's what I think. I think. It, it, you know, it sort of depends on the, the 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 future, how far into the future this is set. You know, at the moment we don't have robots that have the capability of setting this stuff up. Yeah. Um. You know, we would have to send packages up. Uh, yeah, and I think looking looking at it now, um, looking back on it, because this is actually from 2018, um, I would have made the human beings be involved in construction. Yeah. Just so that you could see the human beings walking around and carrying stuff and building but you, things, you know. You really didn't want to make a colony sim. No, I didn't. I, I think you were just tired, right? That's right. After, yeah, that's right. You know, I don't think you you wanted to do it. I remember what that conversation. I remember saying that um, we've we've spent six years making prison architect. You know. Yeah. I really don't want to make another simulation of a thousand people. I think also yeah. scale wise, we had in mind that there were going to be a hundred thousand people living here eventually. Right. When you've colonized this whole area. So it didn't make sense to apply a level of granularity to people simulation anyway. You know, the the, the colony simulation was always going to be a much broader grain. Yeah. You know? So I just what? started there um, while we we're talking. Obviously, I built some solar panels. Um, so they they will track where the sun is, and they're not doing anything currently. One of the big downsides of the south pole of the of the moon is that the sun is actually occluded a lot of the time by the mountains around you. It's one of the reasons why there's ice there, but it's also a reason why you don't have power permanently. Um, but otherwise, the moon is a very effective place to draw power from solar, because there's no atmosphere, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to have an array of batteries as well. So when the sun is, is high enough in the sky, um, the batteries can charge, and the solar panels can generate enough power for your colony and also to charge the batteries. And then when the sun is low, see the sun's coming out now, when yeah. the sun's low, you can live off the battery power. So there's a little bit of power management already starting to happen there, even at the beginning of this colony. I think that I had what? in mind that what would actually happen is that you would zoom way out and you would go and build a massive solar array somewhere like the equator of the moon, yeah, where the okay. sun was going to be permanently high in the sky. 
and then you would run really long cables all the way along the surface of the moon, which would itself be a challenge because the yeah. moon is, you know, potted like this. It's all over the place. And you would have this massive power line running all the way along the moon that had taken you years to build, you know? Because this, this terrain data, this is accurate, isn't it? Yeah, it's accurate but exaggerated. Yeah. It's okay. exaggerated reality. Turned so up. this is actually a, a, from a lunar height map. Right. Um, but obviously this colony is massive compared to the size of the moon, you know? Yeah. Okay. This colony would be a titchy little dot in reality. Yeah, yeah. So I've okay. scaled everything just to make it a bit more exciting and I've made the mountains a bit more exciting. Um, just creative license. What effect did um, Surviving Mars have on this prototype? Yes. So we saw Surviving Mars quite early on, didn't we? Um, we did. We were underway with this game already. And um, I remember going to a talk from the Surviving Mars guys and seeing their game and realizing that they were essentially making the same game as us, yeah. except on Mars. Um, and you know they were a much bigger team than us as well and had a big production budget. And so their game was looking really gorgeous. Um, it's not to say that I don't like the look of our game, but we always, it's a major challenge for us to make 3D stuff and to make a 3D game environment look interesting because we're not an art led company, we're a programmer led company. Um, and um, it was definitely a major factor for me seeing another company making essentially the same game but on Mars and mm. also focusing a lot more heavily on the colony side, on the humans that were living there as well. Um, it was one of those moments where I just thought I, we should have be, we should be focusing more on the people. Yeah, um, yeah. Because you can see in the tutorial, it's only just started to tell us about producing oxygen. Yeah, yeah. Even after all this time playing. Um, I, so. I think that's part of the challenge as well in in the in the modern landscape. You know that I, I suppose it's always been the case that maybe somebody else is going to make a similar game, but the the chances of that now are. It kind oh, of happens, really high. It's happened you know? repeatedly, actually. This yeah. is going to be a recurring. This is yeah. going to be a recurring conversation in every one of these videos that we, we quite often found ourselves making a game that somebody else then announced they were making. Yeah. Um, it's not helped by the fact that several of our game prototypes are set in space. They're they're um, similar because there was a theme that you were interested in, I think, which was which sort of space building. Yeah. Um, and, and that will come out as we make videos about the other prototypes. They're not all space builders, but a, a lot of them are. And you can see this kind of attempt that you've got to, to find it, you know, and that's yeah. what I think is going to be interesting in this series of videos that we, we attack this, this idea, you know, this, this seed that was sitting inside of you from very, very different angles, you yeah, know, lots yeah. of different yeah, um, the space, the space mega approaches. colony idea, basically. Yeah, yeah. Humanity in space. Yeah. I and mean, you can see me here focusing on this is back in the factorial world again. We've now got these ore refineries that I've built. Um, and these are processing the mineral ilmenite into um, iron and titanium and water and oxygen. Yeah, I, I hated all this. I remember this. Yeah, you know, and this is this. this is based on genuine science. So the ilmenite yeah. is a is a mineral that exists in large large quantities all over the surface of the moon. And it is this wonderful formed um it's it's a mineral formed of iron and titanium and and it's got water trapped in it it's absolutely amazing it's, yeah. and um it, so it has it has oxygen trapped in it it's uh, it's iron and titanium and oxygen fused together and essentially you can there's a process that you can run that requires water as an input um and you get out um those very useful construction metals and you get oxygen out of the lunar surface. So this is what this is what I always struggled to get across in the game. Was to me, it was just cocking amazing that you could extract oxygen from the surface of the moon. Mm. Right? I don't think that's something that's widely appreciated, but you can. No. It's there. Um, it's just trapped in minerals that have been baked over millions of years into the surface. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's trapped in ice that uh, only occurs in certain places. And so straight away, um, our robots pick up the ilmenite from our mining zone take it to our factories and then the resulting uh, outputs are then dragged off to our stockpile um, and we can start stockpiling oxygen as well because obviously oxygen is a pretty major requirement for our colony yeah so we you can build that. a couple of tanks and start building it up again very factorio -y, you know very much very much focused on the science and the logistics um, and the industry of building a, a lunar colony I remember us having conversations of me saying, I wish I could find a way to get rid of the colonists altogether. You know, right, I right. Remember, I remember having discussions about how I felt the colonists were actually the problem with the game. 
yeah you know, all that yeah. and i just i think actually i just wanted to make factorio but on the moon you know mm. or on mars or something like that and it's interesting because because from from my point of view I, I suppose we should probably explain that um i don't do much at introversion you know <laughs> it's not true that's <laughs> Chris, not true no 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 i know but but you know you you well there was a team that was helping you with this you know but you sort of sit at home on your own you know we don't we don't have an office we don't uh speak on a on a daily basis um you know you you try and come up with a concept and i think of myself in the game uh, in the design side of things as a, as an editor you know i i play it and give my my sort of feedback and opinions mm. and for me i'm much more interested in the colony side of it the people side of it you yeah. know the 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 engineering and the mechanics in service of the the people who are the driver you know that's for me the uh my sort of natural which is why it, it sat together so well with with pa because i think we just both we we're both on the same page and we we both you know bought those two different perspectives together mm. and i and i feel as if there well, was I think always... PA, pa had that pa had that glorious combination though didn't it of um of, of being a really fascinating topic and also yeah. the granularity of the simulation was right we knew what kind of simulation we were making but yeah. i would have liked you know genuinely i would have loved to have made the pa space colony you know yeah. with, with everything in 3d with you know re recreating the the model you know re remake repurposing pa effectively mm. in space you know we we knowing what we knew yeah but i know we had a lot of discussions about that and we had a lot of discussions and it was really clear that you and tom wanted to do something like that uh, and keep make more games like that yeah it's just... well it's micro evolutionary isn't it? it it's the thing that we sort of argued against um in our in our early years in the business and you yeah. still argue against but that i, I don't isn't... argue against it I, it's not that it's that i'm just not wired that way you know yeah, that after yeah. six years of making prison architect i just would not have been able to make another um grid-based construction game yeah <laughs> with yeah. with people walking around like there's loads well, of things we could have done than... and also was... don't forget as well there were lots of other people that were already making prison architect but in a school or prison and that might architect be but in an airport yeah. or whatever you know yeah yeah and that, I think, that might I think be there's some part of me that really wants to be making a game that nobody else is making, you know? Yeah, like which is getting harder. In the early right? days of Prison Architect, we were, nobody else was making a prison game. That would be madness, mm. you know? Um, and so, you know, part of the problem with space generally is there's so many space games. Yeah. <laughs> you know, space is such a common uh, topic, isn't it, in video games? Yeah. I mean, it's, for a while, it felt like once a week, somebody would announce a new space construction game of some kind. Surviving Mars was just the first of many. Yeah, yeah. And then there, and there were some even... There was also Satisfactory as well. You know, and yeah. example, well, Satisfactory yeah. essentially was just Factorio, um, but in 3D and on an alien planet without a yeah. colony. No colonists, no people. Um, um, you know, and each time it happened, I, I kind of lost heart a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah. No. So what was what was the ultimate for you you know, working on a game, because I, I know that you struggled with this, right? Yes, you had a team of people, you know, there's a lot of pressure sitting on your shoulders to come up with the next introversion thing. And there, there was a moment where you decided oh, this is done. You know, I'm not working on this anymore. What, what were the, what killed it? It's very hard to say. It's, it's hard to say if there's any one thing. Certainly by this point, I felt that one of the big problems with this game is that it's quite limited in scope, you know, as it as it currently stands. We can build this lunar colony out, um, and there's loads of other buildings that we can unlock. Like I can I can go into research, and there's a whole re science and research system, um, and um, it unlocks a bunch of new colony buildings that you can build, and you can actually start to build like skyscrapers and buildings where people are going to live. You know, like you have these like modular housing and stuff. But I felt like I felt like the depth just wasn't there, you know? This, right. is, this is a recurring problem with our space games sometimes, that um, to build something in Prison Architect, you have to think about where to place it and how big it's going to be, and you think about where the door's going to be and what shape the room's going to be, and then you build it, and then people interact with it on a square-by-square -square basis. Whereas in this environment, it doesn't really matter where I put something. 
this is one of the problems. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. If I want to build some batteries, yeah. I can build them over here, or I can build them over here. It doesn't make any difference. Um, and that's a key problem. Now, some things, like the minerals, if you want to start mining an orthite, for example, you have to build it in a certain place, but it was, it's not enough. Yeah. And it felt like the depth of the simulation wasn't strong enough and, and wouldn't be strong enough with this model. Um, so, you know, we've, we're not, in, in on the Factorio front, we're not as strong as Factorio because we don't have the sort of fine-grained conveyor belts and resource tubes going everywhere. And on the front of a colony game, we're not as advanced as even Prison Architect because we're not simulating people on that level. We're simulating people on this sort of broad, broad colony level, which is also quite lacking in possibilities. Mm. Um, and then in the construction front, we're not really mandating any particular skill about where you build anything or how you build anything. Like I've just built a lot of skyscrapers here. It doesn't really feel like an achievement, you know, because I just slapped them down. Um, and I think there came a realization to me while we were making this game that by this point in the tutorial, say, everybody's lunar colony essentially looks the same. Yeah. Because yeah. there is only one route through. There is only one way to do this. You need to have algae farming, and then you need to have water production, and then you need to have solar panels with batteries. There isn't really any choice, right? To quote that example, um, you know, that video games have been about a series of really interesting choices that the player mm. has to make, or interesting trade-offs, right? Prison Architect always had trade-offs whenever you built something. You would build something and it would bring with it advantages and it would also bring with it dangers and disadvantages. And so you made choices along the way. And then after a, even even after half an hour's play, two people's prison would look wildly different. Yes, yes. You know? And it would actually reflect their personal uh, design and it would reflect their style, how they'd built the prison. Mm -hmm. And so it worked. You know? Whereas this doesn't have that everyone's colony looks the same and there isn't really that feeling that you're customizing it or building it to your own desire you know i think that, or that you'd want to start again yeah you know? that's right because it's the same um so we obviously the next steps for this would have been to keep adding more and more buildings there are loads more buildings that you can make that do various different things um we didn't even get as far as hydroponics where you can actually start growing food um it all exists, but it feels like it, it, it feels like it's just a content pipeline at that point, you know? Yeah. It, it, feel, it feels like each alpha video we would just be introducing the new building that you could build. Um, you know, the, the scope for the overlaying systems that we relied on in Prison Architect didn't, it wasn't really there, you know? So it's, it's taken me quite a while to explain, hasn't it? <laughs> quite why I felt like we had to abandon the project and move on. But I think that that's that's part of this, right? If there was a symbol, a, a single simple pinch point, then you solve that problem, right? Yeah. And and I think that, that as we make these videos and talk about the process, I think we're actually going to find often when we get to it, there's going to be a ill-considered sort of mishmash, or not ill-considered, ill-defined collection of vague problems. Mm. that we can't see a route out of that's you right. know that yeah. yes you could do that but it feel it doesn't feel like that's a brilliant solution it feels like it's just a you know turning the handle solution and we 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 would end up with a game that would just be mediocre and that's that's why i love this field so much you know that there there are loads or there could be loads of colony builders and sometimes you get it right and sometimes you don't and I, and i think that perhaps if it hadn't been coming off the heels of Prison Architect and the impact that had on you, and, and if Surviving Mars hadn't existed, then perhaps we would have we would have figured some of those things out and, and moved this one forward. But yeah. they did a, a, a fantastic job, and I think ultimately, um, you know, this, this one wasn't one that we were gonna, gonna yeah. move forward with. It was the first of our failed prototypes. First of all, fell price. Also, the other thing to point out is that I did, did not set out with order of magnitude. The clue's in the name, right? The, the name is supposed to evoke order of magnitude growth from a thousand people at the start of the game to 10,000, then 100,000, then a million all over yeah. the solar system. I, didn't, I wasn't setting out to make a lunar colony construction game. 
This right, was just yeah, where we yeah. this was just where we ended up with a prototype. I wanted to make a solar system wide mega structure building game, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where you, where yeah. you're looking at your entire solar system and there's millions of people living everywhere and Earth is this ruin, you know? And that was the that was the core concept to me, driving it all. Right, I wanted you right. to be able to go anywhere in the solar system, you know, and just build a colony. You know, because you know, like I'm sure you're like me, you get all excited listening to Elon talk about our future in the stars, you know, and how we yeah, can colonize yeah. the whole solar system. And that's what I wanted this to be. I wanted it to be that mixture of Kerbal Space Program mixed with Elon Musk's SpaceX mixed with um, Factorio, you know, for the industry side. Like I had this dream that you would be mining resources on the surface of Mars that were abundant there, but that you couldn't find on the moon. And then yeah. you would have rocket ships that you'd built yourself flying between the Mars and the moon dropping it off, landing on landing on landing ships and then dropping off materials and then flying back again. And, would, and the whole solar system would turn into this enormous production facility, you know? Yeah. Right. So you can play this prototype if you wish. Head over to introversion.co.uk forward slash prototypes. Um, make a donation to War Child. There's a minimum of $5.00. But then you will be straight in and you can play and build your own prototype. Chris says it will look exactly like his, but maybe your experience will be slightly different. Um, we also really keen to hear your comments. Uh, do you, are you interested in, in this format? Are you interested in the prototype? Uh, if you are, if you've enjoyed it, hit the like button, share it, tell your mates. Um, and then if there's enough interest, we'll carry on and make more of these more of these videos. That's certainly the plan. But uh, we need to make sure that it's uh, something that you'll, you, you enjoy. Anyway, I think that is it from us. So we will see you round shortly after Christmas. I'll probably be drunk. <laughs> Excellent.